Now I love it when a new product hits the market, but I love it when it's a new product that's totally different than anything we've seen before. And I think it's fair to say, Cobra have just done exactly that. Now I say Cobra have done exactly that, but there are a few others that have cropped up in recent weeks. I've seen Cleveland have brought something out similar. I've seen Wilson have brought something out similar. But this is the T-Rail from Cobra. I'm gonna have a close look at it. It is, in theory, a real good option for a lot of average golfers. And we're gonna see how it fares in the hands of this average golfers. I'll let some golf balls, I'll tell you my thoughts. We'll get some numbers and we'll do an overall evaluation. Is the Cobra T-Rail the new setup for an average golfer? Let's find out. So like I said, I like to see when someone does something just a little bit different, and especially when it's aimed at trying to help an average golfer and aim in terms of making the game that a little bit easier and hopefully making that game a little bit more enjoyable. The big deal that you're gonna have, or at least I've got, is whether or not you can accept the change in the looks of this, because it's far from traditional. And I would say it's a cross, it's a hybrid, and it's a cross between a hybrid and an iron. And it's a very unusual look. As you can see with the images I've thrown in front of you now, we've got what is in effect a very, very thick top line and then a bulbous back. And it is very, very different. And I think that that's the thing that, for me, who has stood over golf clubs for many years, looking at a traditional shape, can I accept that as being an iron? And that's the first bit I'll tell you very shortly when we start addressing a golf ball. In terms of technology, it's really about, it's hybrid technology, if you like. It's about being able to push that CG uh, far back with that bulbous head, so that's gonna help us with uh, launching that ball up. We've got the usual things in, 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 in terms of across the club face, high ball speeds. It's interesting, it's a forged face on this thing as well, so it'll be interesting to see what it does in terms of sound. And it's very much a progressive set again in terms of the size of head shape, and it gets even bigger and more hybrid-like towards that lower end of the bag. I don't think, oh, let's mention T-Rail, because that's all important, isn't it? T-Rail for me, when I tried the hybrid in the F9 earlier on uh, this part of the year, was really interesting when you got into the rough. Fine from the fairway in terms of turf interaction, but when you got into the rough, it was a real help. And that, again, is something that features very strongly within this product. And I think helping from, we, I think it's fair to say a few of us will get in the rough, helping and assistance in getting that ball out the rough and getting it airborne is where T-Rail, for me, was very impressive in the F9 hybrids. Let's see how it translates into this iron hybrid combo. Anyway, let's get into some golf balls and I'll give you my opinion. Right, as ever, before we get this started, uh, I'm always interested in your opinions. It's uh, far more important than mine, to be quite honest with you. And in terms of looks, let's get some comments down below. Could you game this style of golf club? So forgetting the fact that it's the Cobra version, because like I said, there's a couple more that are appearing. Um, if you've not seen them, they're out there. Could you game this product? And it's a big, big question because for me, first of all, sat behind the ball, I like the colouring, it's black, it's, it's far removed from the, uh, from the standard chrome that we'd like to see. It's a nice finish in terms of the quality of it, the gloss back. T-rail system, the underneath, it's okay, it's all right, but that top line is, is already big and bulky, and then you've got that extra bit of bulbous weight at the back. I think on a personal level, I would slightly struggle with it uh, visually. It is a thing for me. Um, I don't know. I think if the performance was really that good, then obviously it's something I could grow to like, but on immediate thoughts, in terms of shelf appeal, would I walk in and pick this one off the... I don't know, maybe if I was inquisitive, that's... Uh, but it's not really catching the eye, let's say. But, like I said, more importantly, what do you think? A couple of things before I go on to actually hit a golf ball, and I promise you I will do soon. Uh, seven iron, lofted at 30 degrees, so it's not ultra strong in terms of its loft. Um, I'm using a, a steel shaft, but there are some very lightweight graphite shafts available, so that sort of... Um, graphite shaft, this head combination again. I think it's really looking at that sort of slower swing speed, but for me, I really struggled. I did try the graphite shafts, but they're ultra light. I think they're 50 gram shaft. It, it was very, very light. I struggled with it a little bit. So I'm gonna use a steel shaft in terms of the numbers I collect. And like I said, I'll, uh, I'll hit some golf balls. The first thing I've noticed, because I haven't hit many balls off camera, but the first thing I notice is the head weight. 
it certainly feels that there's, you can feel the weight in the head. And again, it's sort of, I don't mind that because I like to kind of, it kind of, it, it improves my tempo, if anything. So I don't like, I like to feel where that club head is throughout the swing. But you certainly feel like you've got a hybrid in your hands, if you like, rather than, and I'd say heavier than a hybrid as well, but rather than an iron in your hand. Anyway, the other issue I've got with it, um, not to start off with too many negatives, is a little bit of offset there, which again, I'd struggle with from a visual. Now, with all that said and done, and I've hit some balls off camera already, let's get to the performance aspect. And that ball was pretty decent, I can tell you. And I will, if we can, <laughs> if we can get to a stage where I can earn enough money off this damn channel, I promise you we'll get some software where you can see this ball flight. But for the time being, you'll have to just do with my explanation. But again, really good ball flight. And like I said, the ones that I've hit off camera, this thing is so easy to hit, it's incredible. And I mean so easy. I can put half a swing on this thing and it'll do a job for me, seriously. The thing I can't do is I can't put, when I say half a swing, I can't do anything other than flight it in the way it's intended to, which is high launching. It's assisting me in there. Can I keep a ball down? It, no. Is it the type of club that would be in the hands of someone who's looking to flight a ball lower? No, it's not. It does exactly what it says on the tin. Like I said, there's an easy swing there. That's that one where, again, I finished off down that left-hand side of it. But just, I've, I've just, again, off camera and with this offset, I really struggle to do anything but get that ball starting off slightly down that left-hand side, which is something um, I would have an issue with. Let's hit one more ball. I mean, the ball, I, 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 like, sound. Sound and feel, because I just picked up on it then. Fantastic. I mean, it really is. It's nothing like what I would expect. And when I've just swung through the ball, when I've got over the fact that I'm just looking down on something I find incredibly weird, when I hit the ball and when I swing through the club, absolutely fantastic. It really is. Um, the, the performance numbers, I know, are going to be right up there. The ball flies out. It's almost, it's this thing again, it's the same old tale that we've done a lot of videos of late. It's that situation where can you overcome something that is so alien to you, but in reality would be a massive help to you. And that's the reality because I can't see, I haven't played this out on the turf. I don't know whether T-Rail cuts through turf. I can tell you it worked in terms of the F9 hybrids last year. Can I, um, so I can't, I can't vouch for that, but I can't see it being a negative either. But in terms of, uh, club on ball, I slipped a little bit there, look, absolutely solid, and the sound is fantastic, a little bit sharp, but it's by no means anything that would uh, bother me whatsoever, quite surprising in terms of the whole package there is really decent to be fair, so in terms of playing shots, fantastic, let's see what it did in terms of the numbers and what have we got. Right, okay, let's summarise this one nice and quickly because uh, I think you've got the opinion in terms of the performance, but how did it do in terms of numbers? And I ended up qu hitting quite a few shots on this one, to be fair, to get a, a good ratio of uh, numbers. And here they are in front of you now. Okay, so first thing to note is that ball speed in relation to club head speed was really very good indeed and very consistent again across the club face. That was the really impressive part. Spin again from this type of club, amazed, 5-3 uh, on average spin. There's a couple of low spinners in there in the 4,000 mark that you'd be a little bit concerned with for those who are spin obsessed. Um, but look at the performance in terms of carry distance, but more importantly, not the carry distance itself, which was 170, which was really good number. And uh, in terms of the loft, 30 degree loft, in terms of the type of product I've got in my hands, 170 is where I'd expect it to be at the top end of it. But look how consistent it was. That's the bit that interests me. These clubs are often criticised for the kind of the flyers, the variables in terms of their performance. But for me, again, an average golfer who's going to find all different areas in that club face, I would imagine, then for, over that cross-section of numbers, to get that consistency in terms of that carry distance, I thought was a fantastic number, to be honest with you. Like I said, 170 overall. Yet we had a long ball in there, but overall it was pretty much where it wanted to be. Again, launching at 18.5. A couple of those sort of... Um, Lower launching balls have impacted on that because overall, my what I seen visually out there was it was a very high launching uh, ball flight. So don't be put off by some of them. Peak height, I mean, like you, I mean, as you can see, 99 in terms of peak height. 
um, and you can see a couple got right up there and that descent angle of uh, 48 degrees sort of tells you where it's at so in summary it's high launching fast ball speeds across the club face must have been some forgiveness across the club face because I hit it over a wide uh, number of golf shots and it maintained it and kept it up there very very easy to use can put half a swing on and get the ball out there this club is without doubt if you can get over the looks of it if you can get over the ego element this is without doubt a club that would suit a lot of golfers out there so all i can say is forget my opinion as ever get out there give it a try for yourself and uh, let me know what you think of this cobra product but for right now cobra are doing some interesting things and it's a real interesting product and uh, yeah it gets a, a big thumbs up from me even though i think for me it's probably not one i'd game but massive thumbs up all the same. Anyway, as ever, thank you for watching. Comments down below, and uh, I'll see you all very soon.